Today we're meeting up with friends from the U.S. who are here in Europe and in Paris for just three days. And we're going to show them and their two kids all the things we can fit into three days. We'll see the Eiffel Tower, Sacre Coeur, the Louvre, all of the stuff we can do. And we're going to try some amazing food and some unusual foods. So let's go find them. Allez, on y va. So we met up with JR, Aaron, and their two daughters coming from their trip from Barcelona, Spain. And very thankful they were gracious enough to let us film the Paris itinerary of their European vacation so we could share it with you. Our hotels are by the Eiffel Tower and we decided to take the metro to the Trocadero station. Now the Paris Metro has a lot of stairs to get in and out. So if you have lots of luggage, I'd recommend you take a taxi. But since we're traveling light, we can manage that. Aaron and JR took two rooms at the Palais Chayo near the Trocadero and the Eiffel Tower. And we stayed in their sister hotel just around the corner at Hotel Longchamp Elysee. Le Palais de Chaillot Hotel is a fun and vibrant hotel. Their rooms are spacious and comfortable with little balconies to enjoy the neighborhood feeling of the area. Now the hotel doesn't have quad or connecting rooms, but they do have side-by-side -side rooms behind a privacy door. So the family is all together and mom and dad have a little privacy on the trip. And ours, the Hotel Longchamp, is a little bit more traditional with a lovely courtyard garden and an old piano in the lobby. The room felt a little bit small, but that's because they offer a full king-size bed, which is really nice. We were very comfortable and we slept like babies here. We have a tub. <laughs> Just a little tub, but a tub is a big deal. Now the hotels are right between the Victor Hugo and Trocadero metro station. So that gives you access to anywhere you want to go. And it's just a 10 minute walk to the Eiffel Tower. So now that we dropped off our luggage, it's time to see the sights. And one of the first thing we recommend is getting a great view of the city. And one of the best places to do that is in front of the Sacré-Cœur in Montmartre. So we're heading to the Blanche metro station so we can take a peek at the Moulin Rouge on our way. The platform in front of the Moulin Rouge is a great place for a photo op. I'm not convinced they look like Marilyn Monroe up there, but they had fun trying. From the Moulin Rouge, we're headed up the hill towards Sacré-Cœur. And you really need to wear your walking shoes here. Our first stop was near the Abbesse metro station at Le Mur des Jetemes, or the Isle of You wall. The I Love You wall is another place for photo ops. I love you, darling. Oh. <laughs> now we picked up something for a picnic in front of the Sacré-Cœur. We got a couple of classic jambon beurre sandwiches and some paninis and headed over towards the step in front of the Sacré-Cœur. Now saving our legs was worth the price of a metro ride, so we tapped our Navigo cards for a ride on the funiculaire. The view from the Sacré-Cœur is breathtaking and all of Paris is laid out before you. Relaxing to enjoy your lunch with that view is a good idea. This is one of those places that has you feel like you're in the middle of it all in Paris. Next, we're headed around the corner to Place du Terre. In a city of art, this place is paradise. This is the place to find a higher level of painters and sketch artists who will do both realistic or caricature portraits. The Coley's decided that it would be a great souvenir for their trip and chose a talented and playful artist. We even used a photo to add their dog to the family caricature. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> 
While we made our way through the souvenir shops and silly shopping, we decided to stop for ice cream with a macaron on top. But now we're heading to the Anvers metro station to make our way to the base of the Eiffel Tower for a river cruise along the Seine. When you first arrive in Paris, I recommend seeing the city from above like we did at Sacré-Cœur and then from the boat level on the river. It helps you get your bearings and get an idea of where things are. The Vedette cruises take you from the Eiffel Tower along the river past Notre-Dame and Ile de la Cité and then it comes back up on the other side. The guided tour is done in both French and English, letting you know what the sites are and bits of history that gives you a context of what you're seeing. Things like Le Louvre, the Musée d'Orsay, the Tuileries Garden, Notre Dame, and all the famous bridges. This is a real great introduction to Paris that sets the pace for the rest of what you'll see. But now it's time for dinner. We chose Campanelle because it was near the Eiffel Tower and our hotels, and they offer a kid's menu. And also because they have classic French food, and we wanted to know if these guys would eat snails and frog legs. <laughs> like that? As it turns out, the kids just wanted chicken tenders and fries. JR and Aaron love the onion soup. And of course, we had to have profiterole to complete the meal. Walking back to our hotel with the twinkling lights of the Eiffel Tower was just the cherry on top of a beautiful day. So after 17,262 steps, we're now all ready for a good night's sleep. We met up with Aaron and JR for breakfast at their hotel. A traditional European breakfast with baked goods, fruits and cereal, yogurt and meats and cheeses, and of course the coffee machine that also makes cappuccino and hot chocolate. Yum! The plan this morning was to go up inside the Eiffel Tower, but the tower had other plans. We got an email last night, late last night actually, uh, it almost came like around 10, 11 o'clock, and it said, important, thank you for choosing the Eiffel Tower, but due to a technical incident related to an elevator, your visit booked for tomorrow at 9.30 has been canceled. And then it says that we're gonna get refunded and all that, so we're gonna make another plan. Let's see what we discover. Next, we're off to visit Saint-Germain. We took the metro to the Odeon station and made our way to Rowan Court that runs between Boulevard Saint-Germain and saint andres des Arts. It's a charming old street with a left bank flair and home to some of our favorite spots like the Grim Art Stationery Store and Le Jacobin Tea Salon. But that's not where we're having lunch today. These kids are picky eaters. And when I told them that crepes were somewhere between a quesadilla and a grilled cheese sandwich, they thought that was a good idea. So we went to Brez Cafe for lunch. And there are six locations around Paris and each one has its own unique look, but all of them have sweet and savory crepes. Needless to say, the kids loved it and we had a great time. After lunch, we headed down to the Jardin de Luxembourg, and we gave the girls a challenge to find us a Statue of Liberty. Yes, there is a Statue of Liberty in Paris, actually five of them. And we wandered around the park a little bit, seeing all kinds of different sections until we found the statue. Erin said that this park is exactly what she thought of when she imagined Paris.
From there, we decided to stop for a cup of coffee and a treat along our way through the Latin Quarter. These guys had seen the Notre Dame apple in one of our videos and just had to have one. So here we are at the La Croix Patisserie. No trip to Paris is complete without a stroll along the Seine and checking out what the Bucanis have to offer. Notre Dame Cathedral is still under construction from the big fire of 2019, but you still have to stop by. It is something to behold in person. For the girls, the best part was feeding pigeons out front. After Notre Dame, we headed over to Le Marais. We crossed the Pont d'Arcole Bridge right into the Hotel de Ville, or Paris City Hall. These guys are busy getting ready to host the Summer Olympics in 2024. One of the cool things that young people love to do in Le Marais is finding space invaders. They're all over the place. These tired kids woke up and were so excited just looking for them. Because the girls love feeding the birds so much, we stopped again in front of the Centre Pompidou Modern Art Museum to let them play some more. And while you're in the neighborhood, you just can't pass up some of the best ice cream in Paris at Bashir. That's one of the best ice cream in Paris. Next, we're taking the metro from Leao, but we had to stop and climb on the head sculpture, Le Coot. We headed over to the Champs-Élysées to see the shops lit up at night. It was especially fun to see the polka dots and the mannequin statue of the artist on top of the Louis Vuitton store. And of course, we love how the Arc de Triomphe looks lit up by night. After 18,436 steps, we all needed a foot massage and a good night of rest. Bye, good night, guys. Another great start to the day with a good cup of coffee and a yummy breakfast. We're checking out of the hotel, but we're not done visiting Paris yet. So we stored our bags at the hotel. And with two major metro stations right nearby, it's a pretty convenient place to go out and come back to to pick up the luggage later. When you're in Paris, you just have to go on the rooftop at the Galleries Lafayette. Now, it may seem strange to go to a store to see the view, but trust me, they're happy to have tourists come in. You can tell by the giant Paris Jetem sign that they put up for photo ops. The view is absolutely amazing, and it's a fun experience to just go there and see all the sights. Just one level below the rooftop, there's a great place for souvenir shopping. And you'll find all kinds of stuff, like food items, knickknacks, and home decor. How much are they? So these are, are definitely more expensive, but they you can tell they're a lot better quality, too. This is something you would get if you wanted to keep it a long time. The other ones are good for just a quick picture and then toss it. How much are these? These, I believe, range from about 20 to 29 euros. So this one is 29? The other ones you could get for three for ten. Oh yeah, that's made in France though. That's a that's a good variety. And it's a hundred percent lamb's wool. And I especially love the puzzles and playing cards and games, so I can relive all of those moments and share them with people when I bring them as gifts. While they have a really nice food court here next to the souvenirs, today we're heading over to the iconic Bouillon Chartier for lunch. We made it a point to arrive right when the restaurant opened, and we did that for two reasons. One is that we have time tickets to see the Louvre at 1.30, and the other reason is that if we came just a little bit later, we'd be in a line that wrapped around and around, and it would take forever to get in. JR says this place is like the French Denny's, it's good, solid, affordable meals 
with homestyle cooking. We had four appetizers, six lunches, a carafe of wine, and it was just over 10 euros per person, including a couple of steaks, beef bourguignon, spaghetti, hot dogs, but now it's time to walk off that lunch as we head over to the museum. Between here and the Louvre, there are some great covered passages, and I just love those. We started with the Passage Geoffroy and checked out the Made in Europe souvenir shops, toy stores, and novelty decor. And then we crossed over to Panorama Passage and wandered through the restaurants and stamp collectors and other shops. And we made our way over towards the original covered passage at the Palais Royal with the garden shops and the striped iconic columns. But that fun is going to have to wait because we're running late for our tickets at the Louvre. We got to the Louvre just in time, but we still had to wait in line. Thank God the line moved fast and we were inside in no time. The timestamp tickets are definitely worth it. We made our way through the Denon Wing with gorgeous statue after gorgeous statue, and we checked out the royal jewels and lots of famous paintings, including, of course, the Mona Lisa. We saw the artifacts and the Egyptian art in the Sully Wing before being completely overwhelmed and we just had to stop. It's been another amazing day with 16,910 steps, but this leg of their journey is done and it's time to pick our luggage and say goodbye to our friends as they head off to London.